Hey, welcome back to Triple R. Random book reviews. So I got these for a dollar at Walmart. I was like, I got a great deal. So this is my second time kind of messing with this video because when I open these up, well, okay, the game is Star Wars Rivals. Two booster packs in order to play. So you combine the light side with the dark side. You get random characters and they're going to fight. Pretty cool, right? These were on sale for a dollar. I was like, okay, I can actually play the game for two bucks. Play a Star Wars game. Character booster pack. Cards. Got our counters here. Okay, rival counters. Here's a Audra Royal Palace. When a character is deployed here, remove whatever that is from them. So a location. And feed Royal Palace does not have a ability. Okay, so we got some Kind of cool in cards. You have the, here's your character that I got. So we have Ashoka. Looks like she is a power of five, maybe. And then her is her there. Here is her deck of cards with her powers. Okay, looks like it might be okay, like a short game, but. It didn't come with a character. <laughs> so it's supposed to come with these like little tiny character movers so you can play the game. Um, but it did not. And dark side is the same thing. We'll still take a look at the cards. That is unfortunate. Luckily it was only two bucks and not full price. I think full price will around by five. So here's the uh, character boosters. You can expand. Here's the starter with Vader and Luke. Uh, it's your setup. I mean, I guess I could still play and just find... I guess you could just do a small action figure. Or anything for a marker, I, I guess. It's just frustrating that the game's not complete. Uh, here's your setup. Looks like location cards. Uh, your markers, your tokens, character mover. So you choose three characters. Matching your side. Hmm. Combine with a dark side <laughs> pack to play. Okay, so <laughs> these only come with one character. So I'm guessing you can play 1v1. So a lot of messy things going on here. Funko. Supposed to get one character card, one character mover, two character tokens, five action cards, two location cards, a dice. A dice? See a dice? No dice. No dice. Uh, three location markers, high ground marker, instructions. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm missing quite a bit. Uh, well, no, here's the tokens. Okay, high ground tokens. Rebel Trooper, Rebel Trooper. Maybe these are like the two extra people. So you can play two troopers. Like that, maybe the two troopers are, so it's 3v3. That way, I guess. Well, let's see what some of these cards do, at least. All right, here's your deck of cards you're going to be pulling from. You don't have to carry a sword to be powerful. Shoka gets plus one influence this round. Check her influence now. So give allies influence this round. is equal to that value. I won't leave you, not this time. Remove two minus one tokens from an ally at her location. You may play another action card. You know, it's a mission, so you have a side mission, it looks like. Score from the hand. Soka is the highest influence character, even if tied. Okay, it will be wise if you let me go. Plus two influence. You can play another action card this round. Standby alert. Move an ally to a rebel trooper location. Okay, so you have the rebel troopers and <clears throat> I guess your two allies you have to buy so it can't just be 3v3 because the starter is only a 2v2 set so i'm guessing you can just 1v1 okay um for two pages the instructions are a bit lengthy you have missions influence key concepts how to play 
deploy characters, play over the high ground. <laughs> Players take turns deploying characters or in a time for a character place them next to a location card. Pay attention to location cards have effects. Okay, so you would the location card out. You have a three and a four. I don't know if they come out at the same time or not. Your character card would stand up on here if you had one. If I had one. Roll the dice. I don't know if it's a six-sided six dice, then you can just grab a six-sided dice. No dice. Um, okay, your roll shows which location will score in step four. If you roll whatever this is, so I guess they're special dice, score location with the highest point value. Okay, here's your action cards. Name, action, mission, mission point value. Okay, where's the mission point value on here? Three. Okay, that's from, so it gets one mission. Gotcha. Okay, play an action card. Each player chooses one action card from their hand. You may play any card no matter where the character is. Choose your card secretly, place it face down in front of you. When both players have chosen the card, the player with the high ground flips their card face up and takes its action first. Okay. And the other player does the same. So high ground has a has the advantage. Does high ground. Uh, that's cool. Locations rolled. If you roll step two, I don't know, because I don't have a dice. Okay, no, at least one fluence is required to score a location. Hmm. So I guess you have to like land a location and try to score the, the number. In the round, replace any scored locations with new ones from the location deck. Okay, so I guess these are a deck, actually. You'll flip them out. Remove all negative one counters from characters in the back of the tank. The players take back all the characters. All right. Place action cards you played in your discard pile, then draw cards from your action deck. Refill your hand with three cards. Four for holograms. If you already have three, don't draw any. If your deck runs out, shuffle your discard action cards and reform your deck. A player without the high ground takes it for the next round. So, like initiative, I guess. Game in. When the location deck runs out, score all remaining locations each round. Do not roll the die. The game ends when the last location card is scored. Add up the points on the cards in your score pile. The player with the most points wins. If tied, the player scored more location cards wins. Okay, so I guess you beat locations. You go in your score pile. So she would have three. I'm just guessing. Uh, mission. Some characters have action cards for the mission. Anytime the mission conditions are met, you may add that card to your score pile. Don't refill your hand until the end of the round. Action cards in your score pile are worth more points. Shown at the bottom, these cards can still be played in step three. Like any other action cards, ignore the mission text. Most missions must be scored from your hand, so you have to choose if you want to use the action card or hold on to it to try to score the mission. So I'm assuming the mission cards are worth a good amount of points, so yeah, it's worth three, or you can score from the hand, or she's able to remove two negative one counters. So that's probably pretty strong. So. Maybe at the last round, when your location is about to run out, you just try to fulfill your mission. Influence, every character has influence value shown on the character card or token. Influence is used to score points. Um, so our influence would be, I'm guessing, five. Yeah, card influence is up here. Okay, and then trait, what is her trait? He is a force user. So he uses the force. Okay. All right. Ally. Another character on the same side. A character is not considered their own ally. Okay. Another character on the same side. Okay. Ally. Yeah. Back to tank. A way to remove influence. Lost tokens. Negative ones. When a character is moved to the back to tank, or that is, either when deployed by an action. Place them off to the side. They cannot move out of the back to tank this round. At the end of the round, remove all negative one counters from them in the back to tank. Enemy. You know, the character on the opposite side. Move. Change character's location. Moving is not the same as deploying. Traits. Uh, yep. Forced user. 
so on and so on. Didn't really see how you move. Deploy, hold the dice, play an action card. How do you move? Hmm. Anyway, I can't play anyway, so what do I care? All right, so that is the, ah, uh, whatever, Soka deck that I can't play. These cards are decent stock. I'm not a huge fan of, like, oddly shaped cards. Just kind of gets in the way of things, I think. Overall, this token came out, of course. So this is pretty much just kind of trash. No dice. Uh, no mover. I mean, I guess I could look up the dice and then see if it's a four or six-sided kind of thing or whatever they're using. Let's check out what we had here. What do we got? I don't remember. Oh, we have General Grievous. It was a four-power. See what his cards do. So his locations are Bridge on the Invisible Hand and Naboo Grass Plains. When the character is deployed here, place a negative one on him. Okay. It's worth six points. Okay. And he has all right. We'll check it out. Move an ally from Imperial Trooper's location to any other location. Your ship is waiting. You may move. An ally from Grievous location to another location if you do, or move to make influence from the ally for a heal. Then they are blast them. Place they one on any enemy at each trooper's imperial trooper location. Crush them, make them suffer. For each card in your opponent's discard pile, place native one on that card's character. Army or not, you must realize you're doomed. Place four. Because four, yeah, four negative ones on enemies at Grievous location in any combination. Okay, so you can split it. So if there's like two maybe little rebels, you can just bump them off. Her power is four, so he would defeat, or five. So you still need one extra. So I'm not sure how damage actually plays out. It would be nice to get the dice and the little character, but we did not. So I'm probably just going to throw these away. I don't see the point in tracking. I don't know. I guess if I picked up a starter for cheap, I would just need some kind of character card or some kind of token mover. So I guess there's that. No idea if the game is good or bad or how it works, really. But for two bucks, I thought it was going to be a okay investment. I mean, I guess I got a YouTube video out of it. If you have played this game, let me know if it's good or bad. Should I even bother getting the starter and like maybe trying to figure out how to add these characters into the game? Or should I just call it a loss and throw these away? Thanks for watching Triple R. Have a good day or night, whoever you are. Smash that like button. Hit subscribe. Thanks.